Why is it harder for those who are already here to be the change in the world? Hey guys, I'm back to do another video in a channel writing. If you don't know what I do, I do channel writings. And <clears throat> this one came through. Um, and it's about why, you know, people who have been here um, find it harder to be the change in the world. And I'm sure you've all heard of, you know, the expression, be the change that you want to see in the world, right? So why is it that people who have been here longer and already um, find it hard to be the change in the world, right? So, you know, a lot of that has to do with fear, you know, being... Uh, separate, being um, looked at weird, uh, being not accepting, you know, and um, making change is not always easy. And in, in, in our lives, and um, you know, a, a, a small uh, in our personal lives, like on a minute level, um, with what's going on with our lives, you know, and maybe with our families, our friends, things like that, or on a, a large scale, right? So uh, when we change ourselves, our lives change, and then the outside world changes, right? So if you've understood that concept, it can be difficult because if you, you know, are in a relationship or have a family and you want to step out and be your true self and make the change then that you want to, you know, a lot of, of st stuff stands there in your way of doing it, like fear, rejection, acceptance, um, and so it keeps us limited, right? And so a lot of people don't do that because they've learned how to be, what to do, and what's accepted, what's not accepted. And so we, you know, on that level, find it hard because the minute we change ourselves, right, our scenario in our lives, what we're experiencing, who is in our life, where we are, where we're working, uh, what we have is all a result of where we are, right? Where we currently are in our moments of living our lives, right? So for instance, you know, uh, any time prior to, you know, uh, you were in a different place and the result was wherever you were, right? And so when things change, our outside world changes, right? So when we change within, that changes. So it also may be that we're, facing the fear, you know, like, if I change who I am, and I don't show up like this anymore, right? Is that person going to still love me and accept me for who I am? If I'm not showing who I truly am, and I'm showing this facade, you know, because we change all the time. And it's like, this becomes this barrier between how I'm showing up and who I am, which is a separation, right? It's like a facade that we're creating, in our lives with this person. So we're really not being who we are. We're not being true to ourselves. We're not being true to them um, because if they can't see you for who you truly are, because you're still showing them that person and you've changed, you know, you're not showing up as you are, right? And that creates a separation uh, from yourself to, <clears throat> to, you know, who you truly are. So, you know, and a lot of times that comes in fear, like, you know what, I'm going to have to, you know, this relationship's going to end up changing or breaking up or my job's going to change, you know, and we have a lot of fears around that, you know, and so who would I be is the question that always comes up is who would I be if I am being my real self, my true self, and standing up in who it is that I truly am instead of still being this facade and bringing that to the forefront. Um if you are, and I, and I've had that experience, um, you know, in my life with this person. And so they were continuously showing me this facade and it made for me to see them in a certain light, Right. And, but behind that light, um, they were a total different person. And so they, little by little, they started showing their true colors and like, it started creating this dissonance between me and them. And it was it, the separation happened, right? So it's really important to, you know, be true to ourselves and kind of not really where I wanted to go with this conversation, but I guess that's where we went to. Um, 
but it, it's important, you know, to be true to ourselves, show up, um, face our fears and be who we truly are. Um, and so going back to the, the topic on that, uh, why is it harder for those um, who are here, it, you know, already to make that change, right? And that, that's why it's hard. Um, you know, it, it's not always easy to make change, you know, but um, it's, it's important to do that in your lives because you're not only, um, I, I don't want to say the word fool, you're not fooling yourself or you're not just fooling that yourself or them, but you, you I mean, you're kind of like, sap, you know, self-sabotaging yourself in a way um, because we all have a partner role that we're coming, you know, into this, this world to show in um, experience but also show up and we have a, a soul purpose, not just a, a human purpose because we're both. And a lot of people get caught up in like on this human being and then they don't realize they forget that they have this soul, uh, spiritual divinity within them, right? So we have a soul purpose. We have a human purpose as well. And <clears throat> when we're only going on one track, you know, we're kind of forgetting about the other. So we're not being our true selves as a whole if that makes sense. <clears throat> and so basically, um, I'll be getting to the channeled writing here in a moment, but I just kind of wanted to put that out there because it is, you know, we really want to kind of get into where we're being true to ourselves and, you know, showing up as we truly are. And <clears throat> when we change, change with it, right? Because what we did yesterday is not what we're going to do today. And what we're going to do today is not what we're going to do tomorrow, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and so, you know, when we allow that change to happen, just to bring that forward, right? So um, everybody's changes and, and there's nothing, it's about evolution, right? So there's nothing you can really do about that because it's just the way that it is. Now, uh, for as far as, um, you know, why it's harder for those um, who are already here, um, you know, the channel message that I, I've got uh, already here to be the change, right? So uh, being the change in the world is being who we are in the moment, right? Um, and not only on our, our own personal level, but on a, um, you know, more on a macro level. So how, do, how can we change the world, right? And what is it that we're meant to do or why we have our purpose and why why did we come here, right? Uh, why do we come here, right? It's it's more than you're just born as a human and then you die. <laughs> There's more to this than what's going on than what a lot of people tell you, you know, and kind of think outside of the box scenario, right? Um, but this is what I got in, in the channel writing. And so I'm just gonna go over that here. Um, it says the children uh, know more as they see more with fresh eyes, which goes to say that they are the way of the future generations. Um, so basically that's saying like, well, as we're here um, and, you know, being here longer, we've become conditioned. And like I was saying, like, we don't show up as who we truly are anymore. We forget who we are or why we even come here, what it is that our, is our role here on the spiritual level and then on the human level, right? Because we have both. So we've become conditioned to the system that we live in. And so a lot of times our fire burns out, you know, as your your child, you're very energetic, you're like inquisitive, you know, you're you're um more open and explorative. And then as you get older, you know, a lot of people will be like, Oh, well, that's due to old age. <laughs> no, uh, we kind of get burned out, basically, you know, we kind of get dumbed down and we get um, conditioned, you know, uh, you, you go to school, you know, your fun time is over. Once you start school, you go to school, you got to work, you got to do this, you got to do that. And it kind of takes away from who we truly are, our creativity, our sense of knowing, our true being, right? Because we kind of get, it's all been separated and segregated, right? And our spirituality has been taken out of everything and turned into other things, right? Um, so like religions and um, things like that, when spirituality has nothing to do with religion, right? But they've created that as a system and that's all that it is, right? And so 
you have all these systems that are conditioning the human consciousness. And so we then forget about everything else as we go through because we're following others, which are our parents who them have been conditioned and just following the line and every new generation that comes in, they're conditioned uh, and in the same way. And so it's hard you know, if you've been here longer to change the way, right? Because you're so used to it and you're so ingrained and you're so repetitive every day, every day, every day, same old, same old, same old thing. And we get to, you know, a lot of people get to the point where like, they just don't want to do anything or change. They don't want to be bothered or, you know, their, their dreams are gone and they're unhappy. And, you know, there's so much stuff that creates dissonance from themselves and, you know, knowing who they are. Um, on top of that, you know, you have the whole um, healing stuff that's going on, you know, in the shadow work and healing the karmic ties that we've, you know, taken on as we're coming into this physical form and being. And if we forget that, we just kind of go on old patterns that have been running, right? And so understanding and knowing about, you know, that is important in your life. Um and then as we come in as uh, new souls, right? Uh, we, like I said, we are all that gen energetic and um, bright light and um, we come in and then, you know, it kind of fades away as we get older. So our, our conditioning, you know, does affect us, you know, mm -hmm. why we find it harder to make the change. And then we don't, you know, a lot of people just give up. Um, some people still have it, but, um, you know, they, they can only do what they can do at the point that they are in their lives, right? So um, the conditioning has a lot to do with it. And then it says they are, un because they are untainted and can rise the frequency code of the universe. Whereas those who have been here are under the fluence and the rule of the burdens of their lives and conditioning that have not stood up and just accepted it. So they may find it hard to rise. They have lost their will to exercise their divinity, which is their separation. And it is within you all, so you should not be surprised when you realize you are more than just a human, right? And a lot of, we're going through that now. Like a lot of people are waking up and realizing their divinity um, and not taking anymore they're standing in their own power their own will and standing up against what's going on out in the world right now right and whether you want to see it this way or not um but it is a uh, the uh the macro everything that's going on in the world is reflection of who we are right and as a collective right and so it may not be something that we wish to happen but it's the result of what's happening because everything outside of us, whether it's in our lives on a personal level or on a macro level, that is the result of what is, right? So um, say you do something and you're going to have, it's like cause and effect, right? And the book I'm talking, I'm, I'm channeling says there's no real cause effect. It's that it's the action it's the, the seed that's being planted. It's basically the same thing, but it's saying in a different way. Um, you know, you have an action and then you have a reaction or you have a cause and then an effect or you have, you know, always a response to something, right? And whether you want to call that karma or whatever you want to call it, it's all really the same thing when it, when it boils down to it. But the result of what's going on is a result of what's been going on, right? Is the things that have been set in place over eons and it's continuing to go until we can change it and make uh, make it into something else, right? And that's kind of where it comes into, okay, building the bridge, making another way, creating something else, planting new seeds. What seeds are we gonna plant? Or are we just gonna keep running on the old programs, allowing it to keep happening? Now, I did a video on that, and you can check that out, and it kind of explains that with the channeling that I got, and it's it's called, if you don't, if you don't want it, don't participate in it, right, and it kind of explains a little bit more about that, because when you're unconsciously, a seed that is planted, a thought, a belief is planted, and you get ingrained with it, it's going to continue, the cycle, that seed continues to grow and manifest in different ways, right? And that's the result of it, right? 
So if we can change within ourselves, you know, with the outside comes different. But if we're going to be one way, it's this. And if it's another way, it's this, right? So we can either live a happy life and then we have, uh, you know, a good outer life experience, right? Because we're creating that. Or we can be in a place where we're suffering and then we have a life that kind of reflects that back to us, right? And so that's what the universe gives you because the universe gives you what where you are in your life, right? And the universe has given that to us, you know, from a, a macro perspective, right? Um, and so having that experience and bringing up a lot of the things that haven't been dealt with, you know, with this whole shift going on right now, um, especially with being in the Aquarius full moon and everything that's been happening uh, for the last few years, right? And so it's, there's a lot of changing and shifting going on. Um, a lot of moving parts, let's just say. Um, but, and then it goes on to say, they have lost their will to exercise their divinity, right? So they kind of give up, you know, the light goes out. Uh, we're just humans. There's nothing we can do. We're suffering, you know, they're, you know, we're kind of, um, kind of stuck or, you know, however uh, people are talking or thinking about that, you know, who aren't rising up um, and just kind of going along with everything, you know, status quo, they're comfortable where they are. They don't want to make change because they don't want to have to deal with it. Um, so there's a lot of people who are, you know, kind of still in that space, but a lot of people are also waking up, which is good. And we're going to have more of that coming up, um, you know, in this year with different things. Um, and then it says, you all have spiritual gifts and abilities, but you don't use them, which lets you suffer more your your will to not exercise it. But you can and will once you learn that you're more than who you are just standing there against a wall, right? Your your wall's not up against, your back's not up against a wall, right? You, you have the ability, you have intuitive abilities, you have psychic abilities, you have uh, healing abilities. And a lot of people have been, over eons, you know, shamed or told it was bad or forced to not do that anymore. And so that was the result of it. And so we've grown away from it, but we have that ability. Everybody has that ability, all these abilities that are starting to reawakening. And, you know, a lot of people as we're awakening, they're getting them back. Right. I know that's been part of my past since I had my awakening. And so I've got all my, you know, a lot of my uh, spiritual gifts back. And um, it, everybody has them, right? And it's it's stepping out of the belief that I am just human, right? I, I'm just a, a normal uh, human and I just have work, home, family, cooking, cleaning, uh, everyday cycles, right? And start exploring these things because you're much more than what's the box that has been made for you to live in right? The example. And, you know, and this has come to me and this was funny when it was said to me, it was like, why do you think houses are box shape? Right? It represents and categorizes the framework, right? You, to live in a box, right? Subliminally messages, um, you know, living in a box, right? And it kind of puts you in that space that awareness of a box, right? And not stepping outside of that, right? But we choose that, <laughs> you know? Um, everything is choice. Um, but it's it, like I said, it has, we all have spiritual gifts and abilities, but you don't use them, uh, which lets you suffer more <laughs> your will or not to exercise them. Um, but you can and will once you learn that you're more than what you see standing against the wall, right? So when you are on the beaten path, it is hard to go your own way, <clears throat> but the frequency code is alive in all of you. So whether you are here and awaken or coming in, it is awareness that we employ you. Um, so basically, um, you know, if you're on the beaten path, of course, it's hard for you to change, right? And so with the new generations coming in, which I did a video on that, you know, um, the other day so you can check that out if you like about the new generations coming in um kind of talked about that a little bit um but the frequency cold is alive within you for so you whether you are here or awakening or coming in it is the awareness that is employing you so basically 
that'll explain it in the other video. So whether you're here a longer period of time and kind of gotten away from, you know, your divinity or spirituality or who you are and bringing the and rising the planets, right? And then end up waking up. Uh, the light is within you, right? The, the frequency code, the divinity is within you. So if you're here already in, in the conditioned state and you're waking up, or if you're coming in as a new form entity person uh, to come in and to make the change, either way, we're all going to rise, right, together. Um, so, and that's just the way it is, because like, if you have the younger generation coming in, that's a higher frequency code, and they're in your, your family or your friends, and you're together, um, it's going to sync up at some point, right? And so as we're awakening, we're becoming the match to that energy and vibration that they're bringing in. So we're syncing up and linking up. Um, it's a frequency and code um, to the next level. Um, it's coming in the awareness of it that we employ you. And so we bring in the awareness and those messages that is happening to rise frequency and code to all those who are channeling information. Um, which is for the next level, uh, where we're going. Uh, not to scare you, but or to put fear in you for when you are in fear, you go into survival mode. And they, they don't want anybody in survival mode. They want people, especially light workers who are already awakening and those who are coming into their power to be on the forefront, like the runners, right? <laughs> uh, to help guide others is what they're saying. They don't want people in panic. They don't want people um, just running around like craziness because what happened when you're in survival mode, right? You're not thinking straight. So basically that's what that's saying. Um, so that's why they're bringing these messages to a lot of the channelers, a lot of the people who are open doing readings, spiritual readings and things like that because they're open to receive and they are able to share the messages and get it out to people who are also needing this information, right? And to keep things kind of at bay as things unravel and evolve, right? So, because if you have every human being running around like chaos, you know, how is that going to be? It's going to be not as smooth as a process as it needs to be, basically. Right? And so you go into survival mode and we need those who are awakening and understanding the nature of things. So we inquire only to those who are fully awakening and are ready to take their place at the table right? At the forefront, you were the runners, right? The light workers. Um, for those who are listening and tuning in, um, right? Now is the time. <laughs> for when you are in panic and survival mode, you will do anything and we can't risk this happening at this time and level in evolution. And so we need those ready to handle situations as they arise to help guide and bring others to best possible outcomes. Right. And so we're not, we're here to just guide. We're not here to save. We're not here to um, change people. We're not here to um, evaluate people, judge them, things like that. We're helped to, to guide people to hold space, to um, bring in the divine uh, energy, higher frequency, love, things like that, and help those who are, you know, suffering the path or aren't awakening or aren't understanding what's happening. Right. And so those who can be calm and steady in, in decision, right? Making the right decisions for your life. So we make this clear in guiding others. We don't fear. We become solemn and trust. You will be guided in the right direction. Hear us as we come to you to be sovereign beings in yourself. Take up your shields, not your swords. So we're not fighting. We're not saving any of that. You're not slaves, saviors, or victims, you are guides for the new generation to help lead others to freedom, not suffering. And so help us to help you by guiding us to the liberation of future generations and to live in harmony, not poverty, with all things in this in name of love, right? So it's all in the name of love, right? And so basically it's saying, you know, sometimes we have to go through um hard things uh, to get to where we are wanting to be, especially when we're making change to uh, like an existing world that we're living in like right now, right? So 
there does have to be some, um, unfortunately, struggle and things going on in the meantime, because some people don't want to change, right? People like it how it is status quo. Um, however, it's not for good for the universe. It's not good for who we are. Um, we're always evolving and changing, and we can't keep it as status quo um, the way that it is. A lot of people are suffering, right? Just look out the window, look out the door, go for a drive, see people living on the street, you know, and is it their fault? Is it our fault, right? We don't know what's happened in their lives, right? We don't know why they're there, and but we're also not really doing anything about it, right? And so how can you um, be in a state of love or live in that existence? And a lot of people will be like, well, they're, they're lazy. They don't want to work, but you don't know their situation, right? Um, now I worked with addiction uh, population. And so I kind of understand some of their situations that gone on that has helped create, you know, where they are in their life. So not everybody has um, a perfect life and um, we all go through stuff, right? Um, so it, it goes on to say, <clears throat> um, be good to those who are who are awakening and coming in for they have created good great space potential and room for growth in the human evolution now is the time to rise keep faith in moving forward the time is no more coming the time is now is no more coming it for it is here so you know <clears throat> people are always say oh you know, the awakening's coming, the awakening, no, it's now, it's it's coming, it's happening, it already is, right? And so it's not coming, it's here now um, to let go of the old and on with the new, rise up against your fears and take control of your sovereignty. For you are not far more than, for you are far more than your human self, right? As kind of already mentioned. And it is only temporary. Our human form is only temporary, right? We we leave that behind. We don't take that home with us when we leave here. And so for many of you, things are already falling away of the old, which can be scary. <clears throat> and making up space for the new to where there is no more controlling social structures like we're in religions and other entities. And so... I don't want to say something about that, right? Because like when you've lived your life for so long and you don't know any other way of living, that can be very fearful, right? Because what would you do? Who would you be? And coming back to that question, right? Who am I going to be? Like, if I don't do this anymore, who am I? Where am I going to be? And, you know, it's just that question. Like when you've lived your, and that's why it's hard for people who have been here for so long what else would I do? I, I've only known this, right? And so if I change or I be something else, am I being, uh, am I living a lie? Or am I living my truth? Or who, who am I? And we question that. And that's the point. We need to start questioning who we are beyond this construct that we've created within ourselves uh, so we can evolve through that, right? And move forward. Um, if we don't question anything, we just accept what it is, how it is, and pass it down from evolution to evolution, our generations, um, then we don't get anywhere, right? <clears throat> it just keeps evolving. Um, it keeps being the result. And it's kind of like that saying, you know, if if you don't plant a new seed, you're going to get the same thing, right? Or I forget what the saying is, but um, I, I believe you get the, <laughs> the understanding of it. You know, nothing changes if you don't change it, right? Basically. Um, and there was a saying about that, but I don't remember who said it. Um, but it, that's what that is, Right. And so, you know, it's, it's time for, you know, to change, but, you know, a lot of times that we're kind of so used to a way that it is that we just kind of go along with it. It's just easier. A lot of people will say that too. And I've talked to people who say it's just easier and why rock the boat? You know, why, why change it? You know, because people are suffering, you know what I mean? And it's kind of just, it's evolution, you know, everything changes. Right. And so that's the point in it. Um, and so then it goes on to say, as we're moving out of, you know, the, those, um, things that are being brought down, you know, we got to make ways of making a bridge for ourselves, um, from here to there. So like when COVID hit and then everything shut down, 
how are you going to support yourself, right? You want to have a backup plan, right? You don't want to rely on the system that's built for you to, to program you to be a part of it because that was a person's or whoever it was that created it. Uh, I wasn't there, so I don't know. <laughs> you know, uh, maybe in, when I pass over, I'll know, I understand it. But from this point of Laura, I don't know who it was that created it and set it up and how they did it and how they figured it out. But they created this structure and whatever it was for us to exist in. So unless we're able to, you know, change it or build a, a bridge for yourself, right? Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Make it where you have other ways to exist you know if something system goes down right because it's not beyond happening again let's just put it that way um so you know having these bridges built you know is is a good idea you know making little gardens of food or whatever it is that you're gonna need um and not out of fear and not out of like survival but out of being smart being conscious being aware being awake that you know my life is reliant on this job, this this government, this 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 and this and this, right? And that's not the way it was meant to be. We're sovereign beings, right? Um, and so you don't need them to live in a world of love, only hate, destruction, and control. So as they move away and dissolve, you're going to need to have things put in place. So build your bridges. Uh, plant your feet firmly on the ground and feel the earth, breathe it in, for it is alive within you. It wasn't meant to be this way, right? So you, we were not meant to live this way. This is a construct that's been created by the mind of someone who uh, was in control, right? And so it's um, evolved from that point of being to where we are now. And so if you step back and look at it, um. You know, it's just in a different way. It's just a present moment way of being. It, it's still existing, right? Because we're still participating in it because the construct is that it's still happening and we're believing in it, it's happening. But if we don't believe it and we change it and we plant seeds for something else to grow, that's the transition. You got to plant new seeds, right? Create new things. You know, what is it we don't want and what is it that I do want, you know? And so we can do that and evolve through evolution that way. Um, instead of participating wholeheartedly in, in the structure of it, because when we're doing that, we're running on the program. We're not running on conscious uh, in the moments, right? Existence. Um, and so we need the change, time to change the earth and the way we do things onward uh, with the new world coming cometh what may be steady in your heart and it will show you the way through. And that's basically uh, the ending of the channeling um, that I got on that. But again, as I said, you know, it, change isn't always, always easy, but you know, it starts with you and that is the power that you have over yourself. Uh, be true to yourself. Um, and then if you uh, have any questions or want to book any sessions, um, again, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, and also I do channel readings and I also do like tarot um, and med uh, medical intuitive as well. So uh, with a little bit of energy healing in it, but definitely if you're interested in setting up a session or uh, definitely like, share and subscribe. And you can uh, also purchase some of my books. They are available on amazon.com. Happy journeys. <laughs>